Welcome back, friends. This is Sarah Ciotti, co-founder of Elite Advisement Group and Transformative Strategies, Inc. Today, we're here to discuss President Bill Clinton. Suddenly, you know, I hear footsteps and footsteps, and I see the bunch of Secret Service agents coming. And somebody said, oh, President Clinton is here. And I just blurted out. I said, I know him. As you know, the controversy and scrutiny is nothing new when it comes to the Clinton family. However, there's a difference between watching the news, reading a tabloid, and actually being a part of the person's life. I said, I feel very moved today, Mr. President, that having just become a citizen, I'm here with you at the White House. And before I could finish, he interrupted. He says, we are proud to have you as a citizen. Look what he did to this young man from Asia. And uh, he made me really feel comfortable. And we so I'm actually asking Bawa to share with us his personal encounters and to really offer us some education, some knowledge, and some wisdom on the power of forgiveness. Look how he has wisely used his bully pulpit to do good in the world since he left the White House. Bawa has invited us into his home to have one-on-one -on -one conversations regarding the encounters. An exclusive series powered by Elite Advisement Group. Bawa speaks exclusively with Elite. The President of America is considered the most powerful man in the world. Right? I'm there two hours and I could not believe his attention to me. I started questioning. I said, is this guy for real? Who, who am I? Right? He is the most powerful man. He has so many demands, so many urgent things to take care. But two hours? And like I was his world. As you know, or maybe you don't, Mr. Bawajane has been friend, confidant, and a great support system to many of the greatest spiritual and political leaders of our time. He has opened up his heart, his home, and his history to us. These opportunities come at different levels. Who's to judge what is important and what is not important? Use each of those encounters to see what you can understand. So train your mind more and more to be inquisitive, to be curious, to learn from every encounter, from every episode. And you will notice very quickly that life will be much better. There's always moments that we look back upon and wonder whether or not we could have done better. Do you believe that leaders process it differently? Every one of the leaders that I'm talking about, at the end, bottom down, they are also human beings. They also have challenges. They also have difficulties. It's how they deal with them, how they react. Today, we'll be talking about President Bill Clinton. I don't think I have met a more charismatic man than President Bill Clinton. I mean, remember, this guy is bright as you can imagine. Now, to me, this is a critical part of the larger challenge of preparing our country to live in the next century. And we shared, we were talking about race relations in this country. This was his advisory on that, and it was a very interesting experience. We have to deal with a lot of the older racial issues that had been with us from the beginning. I remember, you know, the room was full of African-American leaders. Some of the luminaries, stalwarts, even the man who had walked uh, Selma Bridge and was slapped down, Reverend Dr. C.T. Vivian, one of my great friends and mentors I consider. They were all there. And naturally, the conversation is all about Martin Luther King. They always referred to him as Martin King not Martin Luther King. People who know him personally, who had worked with him. At a certain point, I raised my hand and, and I said, you know, I, I started talking about Martin King. And they turned and they, said, they were looking strange. They said, who's this guy, Asian, who's talking about Martin King? I said, the greatest legacy of Mahatma Gandhi to this country is Martin King. I said, he picked up the non-violent ideals and principles from the life of Mahatma Gandhi. And to me it was, remember these moments are unique moments when either you can get the attention of a person or you lose it. For me it was, if I had spoken of anything else other than Martin King, I would not have gotten their attention. 
President Clinton was very sharp. He saw all that. He saw all that. You know, during all this time, actually, he just always had a can of Diet Coke with him. All the time, his Diet Coke had to be going on. And he was really engaging, really engaging. So when we are talking separately at the end, I said, are you willing to use your bully pulpit to convene a town hall across the country on race relations? In every town across the country on race relations. Confront the subject head on. Get the people engaged. Let them express themselves. Let there be healing. But we also ought to struggle constantly to identify what unites us that's more important than what's different about us. And that's why we're having these town hall meetings. And I want to ask all of you who won't be talking to carry on this conversation in your mind. And all those at the other sites around the country. And when this is over, I want you to go out and do this all over again. At work. Or in any other groups that you're in. Because what we're trying to do here is drop a pebble in the pond and have it reverberate all across America. There's one time I was at the White House with him. And this had happened after the uh, very famous Monica Lewinsky affair. I said, this man needs a lot of healing, is what I felt. What can I give the most powerful man in the world? So, always as you know now very well, I pray to my Guru. I think about Guruji. And Guruji had written a lovely book. It's called Song of the Soul. And it is about the power of the Jain Namokar Mantra on how it can help you in every situation in life. The healing, the essence of how we are, what we are. We are all a balance of sound and color inside of us. This teaches us how to balance ourselves when there's any imbalance. But I said, let's put it in a light manner. So when I met the president, I said, Mr. President, here is a song for your soul. He burst out laughing. He hit me <laughs> once. And we had a great time. Of we course. had a great time. And, but, you know, he could have reacted, right? Because this was such a public humiliation to the most powerful man. And honestly, like, I think of it as, you know, you feel like burying your face in dust when you hear such things and you're accused and you have to face it. You go through all it. But that taught me the measure of this man's character. How do you persevere and transform and renew knowing that all of these eyes have been on you? You know, first, let's just go to the basic teaching in the Bible. Who am I to judge? There is a power greater than us. Above all of us, that is the one to judge. Okay? Who has not made a mistake in life? You know, the famous saying that those amongst you who have not committed a sin cast the first stone. Right? Look what happened in Jesus' life. Okay? And nobody could cast a stone. Because every one of us has made some mistakes. The challenge or the question is, how have we built ourselves after making those mistakes? Okay? I remember when early on I started talking about uh, the need for the creation of the Center for Responsible Leadership. It was because of a vacuum. I think this is where leadership comes in. Can we at that time have some compassion? Lean out a hand. Say, listen, I know you made a mistake. Come, let's get up. Let's start working more and more to see what we can do for the people. Serve the people. Give ourselves, have a meaning and purpose to life. Because those are transformative moments. It depends on how you react to it. If you have the right support, those can really transform you and lift you up. And if you have those people who condemn you, you know the result. When you've fallen from grace, everybody's condemning you, everybody's suppressing you, that becomes the end of your life. Do we want that? I think the lesson is very clear. Dig in deep when you're in the most difficult situation in life. Nurture that extra amount of determination, of energy to get up, rise up, and then commit to doing good. Transforming from the mistakes that you have made. Learn from those mistakes and see that you don't repeat them. Now, if you look at the President Clinton going back to him, look how he has wisely used his bully pulpit to do good in the world since he left the White House. 
Welcome to the second session of Bridging Faith and Science, our ongoing series to expand the conversation around substance abuse disorders and the overdose crisis. He didn't need to do that, right? He had everything in life at that time, but he felt that there has to be a meaning and purpose to life that he can give of the skills and he can use his, the power of his convening and the leverages that he has as a former president and get all these world leaders together to do something good. We have launched a whole national campaign on bridging faith and science to combat the overdose abuse crisis in our country. We need to listen to the specific priorities of every community and work closely together to advance them. So we're partnering with the Clinton Foundation, John Hopkins and the Center for Responsible Leadership to mobilize faith leaders to understand the science of it and see how we can work together. Evidence shows, experience shows, that some of the most effective partners and messengers are faith leaders. We all see through a glass darkly. Both faith and science illuminate what it means to be human and can help us see a little more clearly. Okay, to err is human, but if you keep erring again and again, then it is foolish. Absolutely. Amen in every spirituality, religion possible. I agree with that. So as we both shared here today, there is multiple platforms available that offer support, education, including the CRL.org, the Clinton Foundation, John Hopkins, and Transformative Strategies. So please don't be afraid to reach out for help, for support, or for real life solutions in today's society. Thank you again, Bawa, and we look forward to seeing you next week. And we are going to discuss Mother Teresa. Rumor has it that this was on the wall of Mother Teresa's bedroom. Pay attention to every word of this, please. For more info, follow us at Elite Advisement Group or also I am Bawa Jain on all social media platforms. Subscribe today for your exclusive invitation into the world of Bawa Jane. Feel free to take a moment and check out the CRL 